Hey friends, so today we are going to see how to find majority element in an array. At first we will see what does this majority mean. So here is the definition. What is a majority element? An element whose number of occurrences is greater than n by 2. So where n is the total elements in an array. Okay, means it is the size of the array. So an element whose occurrences are greater than n by 2 means half of the occurrences, right? So suppose this is the array. See here how many times 5 has appeared in this array. So see 5 has appeared 1, 2, so 2 times. Then how many times 4 has appeared? 4 has appeared 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times, right? Then how many times 3 has appeared? 3 has appeared 2 times, okay? Now you see 5 has appeared 2 times, 4 has appeared 5 times, 3 has appeared 2 times. Now let's see the size of this array. So what is the size of this array? See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 elements in this array. Means the size of the array is 9. So n is equal to 9. Then n by 2 is equal to 4. Right? n by 2 is 4. Because we take only integer answers. Okay? Now, so whose occurrence is greater than 4? See here. Obviously, element 4. Element 4 occurs 5 times. Means occurrence of element is greater than half the size of the array. So, this element 4 is the majority element in this array. Right? So, you can use this majority element concept in online polls. So whenever there are polls like you see on Facebook or on Twitter, we have polls and everybody votes to those polls. Now at any given time in the poll, what is the majority? Means which option is selected the most? So at that time what we do? We find out the majority according to this concept, right? Means the option which has got more than half the votes is the majority. Now, how do we do this, right? So, let's first see the O of n square approach. O of n square approach. So, this is a costly approach, okay? This is a costly approach. O of n square is very costly, right? But at first, I will tell you this approach and then we will go for an efficient approach, right? Now, let's see. See, for O of n square, as many of us know, how do we calculate the occurrences of elements, right? You know, you use two for loops, like suppose 5, then you first take 5 and then traverse in the array and check how many times 5 has appeared. The next is 5, as 5 is already checked, don't check this. Then again go to next element, 4, then traverse the whole array searching for 4 and Calculate the number of occurrences. So this is this way. See, for i is equal to 0, right? So get the first element, for example, 5. Okay. So I will show it by arrow. See, 5. So i is equal to 0. Count is equal to 0 because we, we want to count now for element 5. Then for j is equal to 0 to n. So from 0 to n j will be traversing. i is here and j will be traversing from 0 to n. Then we check whether array of i equal to equal to array of j means whether in the array there is 5 present or not. Right, array of i equal to equal to array of j means as array of i is 5 now we will check 5 in the remaining array. Right, and count plus plus. If we find that we increase the count. So in this case, when j is 0 and i is also 0, so these elements will match because 5 is equal to 5, so count will be 1. Then j will increment, j will become 1. So again 5 will be equal to 
the zeroth element five, it will become two. So the number of occurrences is two because in the end then it will not find out any uh, element five. So in this way, with these two for loops, two for loops, we find out the number of occurrences, and then finally we check whether that count is greater than n by two or not, and then we print that element. So this is one approach, and this takes off n square efficiency, that's time complexity. Okay. Now we want to see an efficient approach. So just think, what can be more efficient than this? How can we reduce the time complexity? So the answer is we can use binary search tree for this, right? We can use binary search tree. And this is the node structure for our binary search tree. Everyone who is following this channel knows how to construct a binary search tree, right? If you don't know, this is the link of the video. You can check how to construct a binary search tree and what is the node structure for binary search tree. Okay? I have also mentioned the link in the description below, right? Now see. So this is the node data. And one extra parameter is count. So let's construct the node here. See, data. So what is data? Data is the element. And count. Count is the extra parameter. And then as usual, left pointer and right pointer. Okay? Both point to none at first while starting. Now, Let's see how do we do this. So <clears throat> we will have only one for loop, only one for loop to traverse this array. Okay. So let's make pointer i point to the zeroth element in this for loop, only one for loop. Okay. So for i equal to zero to n. Okay. Now <clears throat> so first element is five. So data is 5, okay, and count, you declare the count to 1, okay, because this is the first element, it is the root, right, this is the first element of the array, we are going to declare the count as 1, because there cannot be more than one count, because this is the first element, okay, so data equal to 5, count equal to 1. Let's go to the next element, i equal to 1. i equal to 1 means what? Index 1, right? I will write the indexes here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the indices, right? Now, i equal to 1. So, element is 5. Now, come here to the root of this binary search tree and check whether the element, whether the data here is equal to the element which is going to be inserted in this binary search tree which is going to be added in this binary search tree okay so this element is equal to the already present data in that node then don't add this element in this binary search tree just increase this count just increase this count. Don't worry, I am going to show you the code as well. We are going to see the code as well and also on my GitHub link, which is mentioned in the description below, I have given the whole code, right? So don't worry, you just follow this concept, coding we will see it later, right? So I will also make a video for coding, right? So let's see. So now i equal to 1, 5, the element is 5. It is equal to the already present element. So we increased this count. Okay. Now the element is over now. I equal to 2. So for I equal to 2, what is the element? That is 4. Now get 4. This. And as you know, the binary search tree rule, the left side has lesser value nodes, right side has more value nodes. Okay. 
So for 4, check with the root whether 4 is less than 5. Yes, it is less than 5. So insert it at the left side in this binary search tree. Data equal to 4. See, we created a new node here. We created a new node here. So we initialize the count to 1. If it is an already present node, then we will increment the counter. If we create the new node, we will initialize the counter to 1 because it is the first occurrence of that element. So let's see for next elements. See now i equal to 3. What is the element? Element is 3. Now again go from root. See 3 is it less than 5? Yes it is less than 5. Come to the left. 3 is it less than 4? Yes. So attach it to the left side. Right. Now data equal to 3 count equal to 1. Okay. So element 3 is inserted in this binary search tree now. Now let's go next i equal to 4 element is 4. Now check 4 is it greater than 5 or less than 5? 4 is less than 5. Right? 4 is less than 5. So go to left. So we went to left. Now again 4 is greater than 4 or less than 4? No. It is equal to 4. And when it is equal, we increase the count. Right? So we make it 2. Now, for 4 it is over. Now let's go for next element. So i is equal to 5. So element is 4. At the fifth index, element is 4. So 4. Again, go from root. 4 is greater than 5 or less than 5? It is less than 5. Then come to the left. Now 4 is equal to 4. So increase the counter. Right? Now as the element operation is over here, let's increase the counter. Okay? So see here. i is equal to 6 and element is 3. Now for element 3, check whether it is greater than 5 or less than 5, it is less than 5. So go to left. Again 3 is greater than 4 or less than 4, it is less than 4. So go to left. Here 3 is equal to 3. 3 is equal to data. So we increase the count. Right? So this operation is over now. Let's increase the counter i equal to 7. What is the element? 4. So 4 is less than 5. Element is 4. It is less than 5. Again it is equal to 4 in this box. Data is 4. So equal to 4. So we will increase the counter. Right? So when we increase the counter here. So it means the operation is over for that element. Now we increase the index. So i equal to 4. Again it is less than 5 and here it is equal to 4. So we increase the counter. Okay. So here as the counter becomes 5 our condition for number of occurrences greater than n by 2 is satisfied. As the counter becomes 5, this condition is satisfied because 5 is greater than 4. As n is equal to 9, 9 by 2 will be 4 and the occurrences are 5. So, 5 is greater than 4. So, our majority element is 4. So, majority element is 4. Now, let's see the time complexity for this algorithm. So, as you know, there is one for loop. So obviously O of n and 
there will be some part for inserting the node in binary search tree and as you all know for inserting a single value in binary search tree the time complexity is log n right so see the time complexity for inserting a single value in binary search tree is log n where n is the number of elements in that binary search tree as we have n elements to be inserted in this binary search tree the total time complexity will be n log n got it so there are n elements and we are inserting these n elements in binary search tree so for inserting every element it is log n it is same as suppose you have five chocolates okay and each chocolate cost is 4 then what will be the total cost it will be o of 5 into 4 right it will be 20 so it's the same thing there are n elements and for each element the time complexity is log n so of n log n is the time complexity for this algorithm now I know you all want to know the code for this algorithm I have given the code in the github link which is given in the description below okay and we are going to make a video on the code as well right so please subscribe to the channel if you want to see such interesting algorithms and codes for those algorithms so for this algorithm our next video is on the coding for this algorithm okay thank you